I played Frank Garner. Uh, my father was a lawyer, and we worked together. And uh, I think he was the representative of the Collins estate, but since I was his son, I was called in to talk to uh, Alexander Moltke, if I remember correctly, the character that uh, she was playing. And uh, I think I kind of liked her. In fact, I know I liked her. <laughs> She's a very beautiful young woman. And there were some mysterious things going on that needed clarifying. Records had to be uncovered and investigated. And I remember at one point we had to disinter a coffin uh, in, in, in one of the episodes. I don't remember all of the, all of the intrigues uh, this far back. I do remember a lot of the actors and, uh, and some of the characters they played, people like uh, Mitch Ryan and uh, Thayer David and, uh, and of course, uh, Joan Bennett and Alexandra Moltke and Dana Elkar, uh, all very good actors, incidentally. I knew because I had worked for Bob Costello on the Armstrong Circle Theater many times. Uh, let's see, that would have been 1966, right? And I think I had been doing, I was in rehearsal for an off-Broadway play called America Hurrah at the same time I auditioned for this, so that's what I had been doing. And it's maybe because Bob Costello knew me. And I'd also done other soap operas, many other soap operas. I'd been on The Edge of Night, I'd been on uh, uh, Kitty Foyle, on Brighter Day, on Love of Life. So it wasn't as though I was new to the, uh, to the genre. So that's probably, uh, I guess I auditioned. I don't, I don't really remember auditioning, but I probably did. Well, live soap opera was the hardest work there was in the theater because you didn't have any time to rehearse and you had a lot of words and if you were on two days in a row that meant you had very short time to learn a lot of words and the timing was absolutely essential because it was live and you had to get off at a certain amount of time so they could come to you the director could come to you during the commercial break and said we're running long speed it up or we're running long, take out the second page of the dialogue, <laughs> and you would. When we got live on tape, it was the same thing. Virtually, the scenery had to fall down before we would stop. And in, uh, in Dark Shadows, our studio was not capacious. It wasn't big. It was a small studio compared to some of the uh, studios at NBC, for instance. And they were so small that at times, while you were doing the scene, the grips would come in and move furniture out so that they could move the camera in towards you. And any little, any little fluff just stayed. Not on, not on Dark Shadows, but on another, another soap opera I did called Hidden Faces. I looked uh, into the eyes of my beloved and said, I can't wait to put this finger on your hand holding up a wedding ring. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't remember that many, many goofs on, uh, on, on dark, dark Shadows, although there, there was one scene that was, uh, was memorable to me, and that was disinterring the coffin. I was dressed uh, in a suit, probably a, an overcoat, and the scene ended when I stuck uh, the spade into the ground cut to the commercial, we came back, and there is this beautiful disinterred coffin. It was a brand new coffin. Well, they certainly weren't going to muck it up because we had borrowed the coffin. Uh, and of course, there wasn't a hair out of, out of place. When soaps were live, you had to have actors. You couldn't have pretty people. You had to learn those lines, you had to hit those marks, uh, and you had to hit those marks when you were supposed to hit those marks. It was very hard work, and you couldn't just bring anybody in. And that is a tradition that, uh, well, it's not a tradition, that's just the way things, things are here. If you've got a soap and you're doing it in New York, you have this vast pool of theatrical talent, people who are used to that kind of discipline. Now, when I, when I moved on to, uh, and this was true of live on tape, it required the same discipline before, as far as we were concerned, it was live. If you, if you goofed it, you made a mistake, it was going to be there. 
they, they didn't have the editing machines then that they, they have now. And uh, the recording machines, there was a limited amount of time. You might have, ABC will give you the, uh, the, the ability to record for 45 minutes and you're doing a 30 minute show. And if you start and you, you blow the beginning of it, you can go back and start it again. But if you get three quarters of the way through it and there's some mistake, you're gonna live with mistake. Now when the uh, uh, equipment became perfected, the electronics became perfected and they could start shooting soaps in pieces and edit them, then you saw the arrival of the pretty faces. <laughs> when, I, when I went from live on tape to a, a soap opera which was taped out of sequence to be edited, for instance, As the World Turns would shoot by sets. They would shoot everything in one set and then we'd go to the next set and then they would break for lunch and if you were in those two sets, you were through for the day. Uh, and when I started, I was just amazed. We would get, we'd, we would start a scene and somebody would blow a line and, they, and nobody would get upset. They'd go back and they'd do it over again and they would do it over again four times. And then I would see that the, the young person that was doing this show was not experienced. They were very, very pretty or handsome, uh, but they couldn't hand the, handle the technicalities the first time around, but it didn't make any difference because they could do it three or four times. Uh, that was not true when we were doing Dark dark Shadows. It was, you know, you got a little nervous doing, because the pressure was on. You had to start, even though it was not live, you had to start at a certain time and get finished by a certain time, and there really wasn't a lot of time to nail down uh, a performance. You had to, you had to, you had to be able to work, work fast, and that's why the stage actors were the backbone of these, of these soaps. They had the discipline. Uh, they knew how to learn lines, and they knew how to learn lines fast. And there right, ain't nothing like doing opening night on a Broadway show to, uh, to, to uh, uh, get you nervous. So <laughs> I have the, uh, the tapes of uh, the episodes that I did, and, and they are a hoot to look at, especially your children looking at them, <laughs> their father, when their father was, uh, you know, when they were two or three years old. Uh, it is an, a, another unique aspect of Dark Shadows that it is still extant, that you can still see it, that it's run. That's not true of the other soaps as far as I know. I'm, I can't be sure of that, but no one has ever contacted me uh, uh, about any of the soaps that I did, and I did, I appeared on at least eight different soaps as a contract player. There's a lot of tape out there, but I suspect it's just turned to dust. Uh, so that one of them still lives is uh, a lot of fun for me. It's a lot of fun for my kids who are now young adults. And it's gonna be a lot of fun for my grandson who's gonna get a big hoot out of it. And he's gonna enjoy the show, incidentally, just on its own terms, much less that his grandfather was in it and uh, why the other shows uh, are, not, uh, are not available, I, 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 I suspect that they're, they're not that interesting, looking back on them. Everybody loves a story. Everybody wants to know what's gonna happen next. And I have a half an hour of stories about people who became addicted to soap operas. I have been recognized uh, as a performer from soap operas on the metro in Paris, on the tarmac of the airfield in uh, Caracas, Venezuela, in uh, Horn and Hard Arts in Philadelphia, by all of the uh, chambermaids in the hotels that I was staying at as I toured on a national theatrical tour. Uh, I went to a party once at the embassy for the United Nations delegate from Algeria. It was United Nations party. There were people there from all over the world dressed in their native costumes. A gentleman in a nice blue suit came up to me and he said, <clears throat> could you tell me what the answer to the mystery is on the show that you're doing now, Dark Shadows? And I said, I can't tell you what the answer is because 
they haven't told us yet. They don't tell the actors that. It keeps the thing suspense. And I said, why do you want to know? He said, well, I, I am the ambassador to the United Nations from Yugoslavia, and I'm being reposted back to my home country. Now, I come home every day from lunch. I live in Sutton Place, uh, Manhattan, and I come home every day for lunch, and I and my wife watched Dark Shadows, and I'm afraid I'm going to be gone <laughs> before I find out the answer to it. That's a true story. Uh, I know that uh, one soap that I did call The Edge of Night, that the, uh, one of the local police departments in North Carolina issued a, uh, an order that n none of the policemen were to stop at four o'clock to watch this show because that's what was happening. It was a kind of cops and robbers show. So they, uh, they would pull over and go find the nearest television set. They had to cut it out. So the, uh, the, the research has been done uh, by academicians and there is, there, is, there is no demographic that excludes anybody from becoming addicted to soap operas. Uh, one, one thing that will addict you, addict you to soap opera, and it, I, I don't mean to be morbid about this, but if we have a flu epidemic, there are going to become a lot of people addicted to soaps because when you're sick and you're watching the tube, you keep watching. And that's when I would get calls from friends that I hadn't seen in 35 or 40 years. They watch, they've been sick, they're watching the soap, and there he is, and then they're stuck, you see. Now when they have videotape machines, they can tape, tape the soap even though they're not sick any longer. They can see it at night when they, when they come home. The dressing room. I love being with those actors in, in the dressing room. The work, the work is hard. Uh, but people like Thayer David, who was a real hoot. <laughs> you kind of a Sidney Greenstreet like, a very educated man. And he would sit in the uh, makeup chair and he would uh, pontificate. He would tell us uh, the meanings of the derivation of certain words. Uh, I remember he did an entire piece on hoist on your own patar, where that came from. I'm not going to go into it because it's slightly smutty. Uh, and I knew Joel Carruthers very well from, uh, uh, from, from the business. And it was a pleasure working with uh, Dana Elkar. And I love Bob Costello, the producer. That it's it's the the camaraderie. It's 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 a battle. Every day is a battle to get that show on. And and get off without the scenery falling down. And it, it and it does bring you kind of close together because you depend on on one another, greatly, just to to get the show on the air. Well, it was unique uh, because of that supernatural. Element. And the fact that there are many soap operas uh, today who include that is just another example of, uh, of flattery as uh, the best compliment. Uh, yes, it was something that was special that you couldn't find any place else on that uh, tube. Uh, as the world turns, might look a lot like uh, Search for Tomorrow, which might look a lot like uh, One Life to Live, but Dark Shadows was unique, and that's why I think, among others, uh, my children used to run home to watch it. And I discovered over the course of time, you were on Dark Shadows? I, I, never, I never missed it. And they might have been teenagers, they might have been kids, or they might have been, might have been adults. Uh, it was a lot of fun, I think, for the, for the viewers. It was certainly a lot of fun to do because it was so different from the other, other soaps. It was uh, a little campy at times, which, which made it a lot, of, a lot of fun. And it could get out, outrageous and you never knew what the writers were going to come up with next, which was not so true on the soaps in the 60s. You pretty much knew that somebody was uh, going to be uh, divorced and somebody was going to be married and somebody was going to cheat on somebody else and of these, uh, uh, all of these domestic problems, whereas uh, as Dark Shadows uh, took us in places that uh, soap operas had not taken us before. Movies had, but not soap operas. And I think that explains uh, uh, its great appeal and its appeal, uh, its appeal today.